Penn State has won the toss and they will receive. They were terrific in the return game a week ago at Indiana. Big return yardage of the muffs and punts. And the kick in the air, and we are underway. It's K.J. Hamler. He will take a knee. And the biggest difference with Trace McSorley this year is he's been doing it with his legs. Steve, he had 100 yards on the ground a week ago in a close win over Indiana. He'll come out throwing. Incomplete the Pat Fryermuth, the tight end. Let me talk about the difference with Trace McSorley, no Mike Gusecki, obviously no Saquon Barkley, no Deshaun Sean Hamilton. Right. Uh, cer certainly more of the weight has been on his shoulders. It's been a concern for James Franklin. We'll see in this game how they use him. Miles Sanders on the ground. Maybe get a yard on forward progress. It puts him in a third and long to open up the football game. Matt Nelson made the stop. That's the strength of this Iowa defense, that front four or front eight, if you will. They rotate fresh bodies up front. No question. Iowa's defense has been the backbone of this team, and it's been the front four, the leading rush defense in the Big Ten, and leading scoring defense. It will not be easy for Trace McSorley today. That's Miles Sanders in a slot, the running back. Third down and nine. First test for the Penn State offense. McSorley steps and fires. It was dropped. DeAndre Tompkins could not hang on, and it will bring up a fourth down. Drops have been an issue for the Nittany Lions. Steve, 22 drops on the season for Penn State is way too many. This is DeAndre Tompkins, who's been one of the culprits. There's been a question of confidence with Trace McSorley and these new wide receiving options. I get it. There's going to be some weather. There's going to be some rain. The ball's going to be slick, but you got to secure the football. And then you wonder if McSorley has lost some confidence in his go to receivers. Set to punt, Blake Gillikin has been a, in a slump of his own, according to head coach James Frank. But can't handle the snap. He gets blocked into the end zone, and it will go out of the end zone. And that's how we start. Riley Moss able to come up with a block. The snap could not be handled, and it's a two point safety. Wow. You got to handle the football. He just got done talking about DeAndre Tompkins with it. Now the punter, Gillikin. You just got to secure it before you run. I think that's Dominique Daphne, a backup corner, number 23, that comes through on the right side to get that block, Steve. So Billikin, we mentioned, has been slumping, and that was in terms of his punting, his net average, not in terms of handling a snap, and that was, per look, it has been a torrential downpour since late last night into early this morning and here in this afternoon, and it was an issue in warm-ups. We saw this coming. Yeah, this is, this is Trace McSorley just trying to get the snap from center in warm-ups. You have to focus on the football. You get a little bit of moisture. It's not a downpour, but it's just enough moisture on the field that that ball is going to be slick, and you have to secure it two times already in the first drive we've seen guys drop the football I mean, that does not happen a lot you open the first minute of scoring is a safety welcome to the football game a not so happy start in Happy Valley today you certainly get the attention now everybody on both teams yes. after watching something like that all the coaches I guarantee you, every assistant coach special teams coach is on the sideline saying look have to secure the football first. Wind was an issue for both of these schools a week ago. Penn State had all sorts of problems and trying to catch punts at Indiana. And Iowa had their own wind issues against Maryland. Smith Marsh set from the 30. And he's able to get out. They push the pile all the way to the 44. First down and 10. Stanley to throw off the play fake. Good protection, and he'll just throw that one away. Todd, you know me. If you say he's third, you got to tell me who's first and second. We've got a pretty good one in Ryan Finley, who's second right now, and then Justin Herbert. Intentional grounding, offense number four. That penalty carries a loss of foul, second down. Loss of down. Larry Smith is our referee today. It's the right call here, and uh, Nate Stanley. Uh, uh, 
mistake here to start. He wanted to throw the slant. It's not there, but you can't just throw the ball where nobody is from the pocket. That's a very easy call for the official. And a rocky, choppy start to this one for both squads. Second down and 14. Iowa will be in two tight ends all game, maybe more than any team in the country. Two outstanding tight ends, T.J. Hawkinson and Noah Fant. See more of this this year from Nate Stanley. Changing plays at the line of scrimmage, pointing out the Mike linebacker for protections. Stanley zips one across the middle. It is indeed T.J. Hawkinson remaining on his feet. The football comes out. It's still loose. And it's recovered by Nate Weeding at the 29 of Penn State. TJ Hawkinson has become a huge weapon for Nate Stanley. Running seam routes. See, he's fighting for extra yards. See if he went down. His knee was down here before the ball came out. 132 yard play. Yes. Recovered by Weeding. We have a timeout on the field. Definitely a fumble. Injured Nittany Lion. Jonathan Southern getting his first start. Now say hi to Aaron Monroe, the third stringer in safety. And don't be surprised if Nate Stanley and Brian Ferentz, the offensive coordinator, get matched up with TJ Hawkinson on the new safety on this first snap of the game. The injury allowed them extra time to get the play in that they wanted to. We're only a minute and a half in. On the ground, Ivory Kelly Martin with everyone expecting a pass. He's down to the 25, and Monroe, who just gets into the game, the redshirt junior from Largo, Maryland, makes the stop. This uh, Penn State team was certainly Nick Scott, the captain, safety number four, is the bell cow in that secondary, but they're missing guys like Troy Apke, Malik Golden, Todd, now in the NFL. Yeah, and I, I thought it was interesting when we talked to Brian Ferentz last year, actually. He said, you know what, what I learned from Bill Belichick, whatever they expect you to do, do the exact opposite. And I think that was the case on that last play. <laughs> or don't overthink yourself yep. either. <laughs> Second down and five. Send Smith Marset in motion. And give him the football. On the jet sweep, making some people miss. And he's taken down by a host of blue jerseys. Led by Yitor Grossmatos. As we watch this game today, these tight ends for Iowa, I think they're the best tandem in all of college football. TJ Hawkinson and Noah Fant. A lot of people knew about Fant coming in. Great receiving tight end. Not a lot of people knew about number 38 for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He is a complete tight end. Can stretch the field. Great hands in the receiving game, but also a very physical and nasty blocker at the point of attack. Third and one could use some blocking here. They got the fullback Austin Kelly in there. And it's Kelly Martin doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. There is a flag down. Robert Windsor was the first man in for Penn State, but the Nittany Lions hold at the line of scrimmage. Check the marker. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 54. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Wins the first man there, the first man to grab a face mask. Wow, what a big penalty for James Franklin and Penn State. You get the stop you needed on third down. You see 54 in the middle of the screen there. Hard to tell. You do? Where do you see him? <laughs> there he is right here. He's going to reach out through the raindrops. There he is, yep. Yep. That's a good call by the official. Bad break for Penn State. They've dropped the sticks, first and goal. From the 10, Kelly Martin will try it again, lower the shoulder, and crash down to the five yard line. Second and goal upcoming. We're going to see three backs for Iowa today Ivory Kelly Martin, you'll see Torin Young. And then you'll see Makai Sargent, all three of them. You know, Akram Wadley was the bell cow a year ago, an outstanding football player. And it's been more of a running back by committee for Iowa this year. Not one of these guys has had over 100 yards in any one game, but it certainly has been effective for them. Sutherland is back in the game for Penn State. 
Welcome news there. Second and goal from the five. Again, it's Kelly Martin. Maybe a yard. Nick Scott, the captain of that Penn State defense, makes the stop. Third and goal. Nick Scott, I'm right here in the end zone right behind him. He saw that crease open before the back came through, and he just went powering into the hole. What a really good play by Scott, the, the captain and really the leader of this defense this year. Scott told us this past week the locker room was fun again after not having much fun the previous two weeks. Again, those consecutive losses to Ohio State and Michigan State. Third and goal inside the five. Gets pressure from the outside. Hit as he throws, and it falls incomplete. Fourth down. Great pressure that time again from Windsor. It looked like there was an opportunity. Here's Windsor here. Looks like there's an opportunity to get the tight end for Nate Stanley if he had the time. But there you see no time, nowhere for him to go. Great job by Windsor atoning for that 15-yard personal foul penalty. Miguel Racinos is on. And now they shift out of what would have been a 22-yard field goal. Let's see what the wild and wacky Hawkeyes are going to do here. Trying to call Racinos five, back in. Five there. seconds to snap it. It's not a big issue if there's a delay of game. You're not, you're not worried about yardage here. They got it off. No, they didn't. It goes through. <laughs> you could see the back judge. Delay of game. Kicking team number 90. Five yard penalty remains. Fourth down. Racinos was so worried about where his foot was lined up, you know, because he's not used to doing that, like a wide receiver, that he had his eyes down and he was just kept checking where he's going. When they yelled to bring it back in, he had no idea what was going on. Hey, with all due respect, what a mess this game has been this time. <laughs> you should see it on the field. I said with all due respect, let's try it from 27. What do you say? Racinos. Boots it through. And it's a, a five nothing Iowa lead. So a five to nothing start. KJ Hamler. And he had all sorts of problems handling punts a week ago, and that will go for a touchback. First down and ten for Penn State. Going to get a drive going, maybe a first down. McSorley trying to throw for it, has Hamler, and he does have first down yardage. There is a flag down. Pass interference. Offense number 87. Half the, half the distance to the goal will remain first down. That's Fryer Muth, the true freshman tight end. Oh, and Steve, I'm standing here now just about 20, 25 yards away from McSorley. And he's, he's my height. He's about six foot, six one, that range. He's going up against this defensive front of Iowa. It's like throwing over trees in a forest. Six seven, six eight, six five, six three, six five. I mean, these guys, it's going to be a tough task today for a shorter quarterback to try to find these passing windows, Brian. I used to hate that, man. I guess, see, first thing I do when I got a game plan is look how tall the defensive <laughs> line were. First and 22, Miles Sanders on the ground. Fact, Stopped by Anthony Nelson. In fact, you, you know, I think the tip ball should be outlawed, outlawed in football. You know, <laughs> you hate it because you had guys open, but these defensive linemen, and they know they're tall. So what do they do right. when they don't get a great rush? They just stand there and read your eyes. So McSorley today, needs to look defensive lineman off believe it or not you see they knocked down six passes against the Nittany Lions you figure these are college kids they're growing they're getting even bigger <laughs> here's McSorley has some time tries to zip one across to KJ Hamler could not hang on Geno Stone with the heavy coverage for Iowa there's one receiver on this Penn State team that I truly think Trace McSorley trusts and it's number one KJ Hamler these other guys haven't proven enough to me to warrant my ex my explicit trust so I agree with McSorley trying to get the football to number one early. Third down and 18. Tommy Stevens is in the game the slot top of your screen. 
McSorley's 0 for his first three. In all sorts of trouble, he'll be dropped out of the 10 yard line. No pass to knock down there. Parker Hesse and Anthony Nelson. You get in third and long situation, Steve, against this defense, and you're going to be in trouble. Here's Nelson. You're going to get a wraparound with Hesse. They've got all kinds of things and moves that they can do. Hesse has the speed to make that kind of a rush. Nelson, the power on the inside move. That is third down defense to a tee. See how Blake Gillikin deals with this punt from a very similar spot. The last time he couldn't handle the snap, went out of the back of the end zone for the safety. Snapped it to his right. Gillikin able to get rid of that one. And it'll be a short punt. And we'll see where they mark the football. And yet still they needed that play yes. on the last play. That's how well Iowa played in that game. Excellent field position for Iowa to start. Stanley trying to float one out there for Kelly Martin incomplete. So we got to town a couple days ago and you flip around the channels and ESPNU is running a replay of that. I was glued to it man. It yeah. was it was intense. And you know we were talking with Brian Ferentz about that game yesterday. He said listen Penn State had a great plan against us. They confused us up front. They were moving and shifting doing all kinds of stuff. Listen we need to just come out run our offense run our plays not worry about what they're going to do and we'll be better off. I was surprised by Ferentz admitting to that. I don't think a lot of coordinators say, hey, we were fooled. They confused us. Refreshingly honest. Good on him. Flag comes down. Well, they didn't run the ball well enough. They only had 82 yeah. yards rushing in that game. If they're going to win today. It's got to be better. Offside with contact. Defense number 54. Five yard penalty remains second down. Robert Windsor has been heavily involved in the good and the bad early on here for Penn State. His second penalty already. I think it's worth noting that Jonathan Sutherland, the safety who went out on the last drive, is back in the game. I still think that Iowa should target him with their tight ends in the passing game. Second down and five. Number 37 of Penn State. On the ground, it's Kelly Martin goes flying. That ball came out short of the first down line. Who's going to come out of the pile with the ball? Penn State says they have it. Looks like Cam Brown knocked it free. Now we got a lot of people pointing in both directions. I was got it. Man, third down. You're right Steve Cam Brown came up from his linebacker position and put his shoulder right on the football. I think Tristan Wirfs able to recover big 74 middle of your screen there. Well yeah you if you're if you're in Iowa you want the offensive lineman at the bottom of that pile because whoever's the strongest is going to come up with it but it brings up a huge third and short here early. And that's the first fumble by those running backs all season even though it's recovered. It's third down and one. On the ground. Torin Young has the first down yardage. Again, those three backs you talk about, they rotate, had not fumbled all season long. I think you see early on Iowa having a tough time running the ball between the tackles. Nice adjustment there, the play call to get Torin Young to the outside with the lead blocker and the fullback who gets Sutherland on the ground. That's Austin Kelly who said, fullback football, that's Iowa. And he of course is playing in place of Brady Ross the starting fullback who's out with an ankle injury. Young remains in there to pick up a nine with a great block by Austin Kelly. And it's first down and ten. On the 24 Penn State. Second man through. Young picks up a few. Cam Brown will make the stop along with Micah Parsons. See pretty early in this ball game that Iowa's Meaning heavily on the run. They've been getting better and better, throwing the ball more and more with Nate Stanley as they've got more confidence in him. But so far, 11 plays on offense, eight of them on the ground. Stanley only passed for 86 yards a week ago. Didn't need much more when they shut out Maryland 23 to nothing. Second down and seven, number 21. Stanley able to get rid of it off to Hawkinson and he leaps a defender and he's down at the 10. TJ Hawkinson showing all the skills gain of 11 as he leaped over Nick Scott. 
It's a big time play from Nate Stanley knowing he's going to have pressure from the outside. Sharif Miller in his face. But look at the athleticism of T.J. Hawkinson. This is one of the more underrated players in all of college football. Not a lot of people know about him. Just a sophomore, but one of the most athletic players on this Iowa team. Mackay Sargent has checked in now in the backfield. They fake it to him. Here's Stanley rolling to his right. And he's throwing that one away. Brandon Smith was in the neighborhood. Second and goal. This is the area of the field where Iowa needs to continue to improve. Last time down, they get stopped, have to attempt a field goal. But scoring touchdowns in the red zone is the number one key, in my opinion, to winning on a road in environments like this in a Big Ten. The light rain still continues to fall here. We expect it to stop in the second half. Second down and goal. Five defensive backs in for Penn State. Stanley with some mustard on it. Maybe too much for Amir Smith Marset. Tariq Castro fields on the coverage. It's not just the Penn State receivers that are going to have a tough time catching the football today, but it's going to be everybody. That ball, as you mentioned, on a rope. Difficult catch in these conditions. What does Brent Pry, the defensive coordinator for Penn State, decide to do here? He brought pressure on the last third down in the red zone. This is a different situation third and goal from the 10 expect them to play a little bit more defense. Stanley barking it out. Has time and zips it in there. Jonathan Sutherland able to knock it away. Fourth down. Boy great protection by the offensive line a great pocket for Nate Stanley. Watch this protection here. If he had a little bit more time and waited a little bit longer, Levy, there was an opportunity that in the back of the end zone receiver coming wide open easily. Penn State was fortunate he didn't see it. Sullivan nearly picked that off too. Here we go again. Fourth down and goal. That's Racinos, the kicker in the bottom of the screen. It's Rastetter, the punter, throwing it, it's caught! Sam Briggs able to come up with the grab. We saw a trickeration a year ago at Kinnick in the game against Ohio State. How about Iowa today getting wild and crazy? Wow. Sam Brinks is a senior defensive tackle for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He Why walked, wouldn't he be? He walked onto the football team, one of the favorites on the team and in the defensive line room, and made an unbelievable over-the-shoulder catch for the touchdown. Now this is fun. <laughs> Racinos, the extra point. And in high school, right? First he was a quarterback, so then he was a tight end. DJ Hamlet. Look to bring it out. He's not back into yesterday. Drilled down at the 11-yard line. So Iowa has a 12-0 lead. They have scored every way possible. A touchdown, an extra point, a safety, and a field goal. A well-balanced start. The 18th-ranked Hawkeyes. See how Penn State can answer with Miles Sanders up the middle. First down yardage and then some. That's their first first down of this early afternoon. And an opportunity here for Penn State, this offensive line, Trace McSorley and Miles Sanders, to get back in this football game running it. This defensive line for Iowa, they will rotate, as you mentioned, eight guys. The backups are in there right now. Sanders with some good blocking up front there. He'll pick up about four. Christian Welch made the stop. Sanders had a best game of the season a week ago. He rushed 15 times for 72 yards, also caught six balls out of the backfield for 54 yards. Look like uh, Christian Welch, the Mike linebacker, number 34, comes up a little gimpy. That's important because Jack Hockaday, who was the starter, is coming off of an injury. Now he's pushed in the service. Second and six, McSorley trying to set it up for Jahan Dotson. And we'll see where they spot him. He's right on that imaginary yellow line that only exists on your television set. They get the first down yardage 
Dotson caught his first catch of his college career a week ago. He's got another grab here today. Tommy Stevens checks in. Stevens threw a touchdown pass in his home state of Indiana a week ago. His first throw of the season. But it's McSorley who takes the snap, and it's a quarterback draw. And he'll just fall forward for four. Amani Hooker came up from his nickel spot to make the play. Trace McSorley ran the ball 19 times last week. That's more than Miles Sanders. Okay, he's the number six leading rusher in the Big Ten amongst all players, running right. backs included. This has become a big part of his game by necessity, not because he wants to. And they are concerned about the hits he's taking. But it just hasn't been there in the passing game. So he's been using the legs. Here he's throwing and completing to DeAndre Tompkins for the first down. It's a good sign for Penn State and DeAndre Tompkins. He dropped the first ball of this game. They need him to come on. They need Jawan Johnson. They need Brandon Polk. They need DeAndre Tompkins and Hamler to step up to make plays for Trace McSorley. All those starters are back in on that Iowa defensive line. It's like a hockey shift change with the four players up front. Sanders for a few, and it brings up a second down. Hockaday able to make the stop there. The other guy that we're talking with James Franklin for Penn State offensively that's going to get more looks in this game is true freshman Jahan Totson. We talked about it. We've got a lot of people in the Penn State community that want to see some of these younger true freshmen and redshirt freshman wide receivers play. And Jahan Dotson's going to get a lot of snaps in this one. Here's McSorley that breaks down, and he is dropped down by Parker Hesse. And Matt Nelson, third down. Matt Nelson with the tackle. And a big part of it is the drops for these receivers, but also just getting open. Here's a look from the All-22. Take a look and see if someone gets open downfield. If you're Trace McSorley, where are you going to go with the football here? Nowhere to go. Here, here, here. You got to get open for your quarterback. Creates some, some separation. James Franklin didn't, wasn't specific, he said some of the younger players have not stepped up to where they need them to be. Talking about his younger wide receivers. Looking for some playmakers besides K.J. Hamlin. On the ground, it's Sanders. And it's going to be a fourth down and short. Just outside the 30. Jake Gervas made the tackle. You might look at that situation and say, oh, third and eight, third and seven, why you run the football. But I don't think that James Franklin had any intention of not going for it on fourth down. So he's looking at it as two downs to get a first, and that's why he ran. Penn State has gone for it 10 times on fourth down this season, converting just four of them. Steve, no safety here. Iowa's coming after him. See if somebody called a timeout. So got to the snap. Timeout. Iowa. There's a first charge. 30 seconds in late. Well, that was 64 a good seconds left. Yeah, good timeout by Iowa. Now Phil Parker, the defensive coordinator, saw exactly what they wanted to run right there. It's going to be a sprint out with McSorley. So now you don't anticipate they're going to call the same thing again. They got to come up with a different fourth down play. That is the chess match. They also were frustrated because they were trying to communicate to one of their defensive backs and finally defensive coaches said we got to get a timeout because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing based on what they're showing us. It's a little bit surprising to see that Penn State on a fourth down situation comes out with no KJ Hamler on the field. Instead they have the true freshman Dotson in the slot. But if I'm McSorley this is the guy I'm going to keep my eye on his fire move. Iowa very good fourth down defense. Here's McSorley to throw. Able to complete. Needing somebody to make a catch, and it is Jahan Dotson making the grab. Well, James Franklin said he's going to give Dotson more opportunities. Trace McSorley trusts this young player. That's not a great throw. If it's out in front, it might be a touchdown. Great job by Dotson. Making the play for his quarterback. True freshman from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Has three grabs on the season, two of them on this drive. McSorley flushed up the middle, gets out. Lofflin, back 
the end zone, caught, touchdown! Pat Fryer knew the tight end, and the Nittany Lions are on the board. Get a little taste of Trace McSorley there, right? This team comes in. Your house, you're up 12 nothing. It's been sloppy. There's been some drops, and he just takes over control of the game, and his confidence leads to the touchdown. Blake Gillikin, the holder there, gets the snap down, and Jake Hinniger, the extra point, and it's 12 7. This has been the hallmark for Trace McSorley extending plays, allowing his receivers to get open. You're going to see Friar Booth here. He's going to end up in the back of the end zone, but he's not open initially. McSorley has to extend that play to allow time. And now this decision here, you see two defenders, and this opportunity for him to throw the ball over those two guys to Friar Booth in the back end zone. A true freshman makes a play on fourth down, and a true freshman gets the touchdown time. Yeah, McSorley's not asking for a lot. Just. You know, work the scramble drill, try to get back to me if, I, if protection breaks down. And when I put the ball in the spot, catch the ball. And that's what happened on that drive. Three times he had receivers separate a little bit. One time he had the freshman Dotson make a really nice play, catch the ball on fourth down. And then the scramble rules, Fryer Moot does a great job of continuing to work with him. And when he located a perfect throw, it's a really good drive for Penn State. They needed to answer there. Todd, I think this is emblematic of where Penn State is right now, right? You were throwing to guys like Gasecki, seniors like Deshaun exactly. Hamilton, and now on this drive, two big plays to true freshmen. Chris, you mentioned the trust that he has in Hamler. I think he's in the process of developing that trust in Friar Muth, the true freshman tight end. Final half minute. Smith Marset will take a knee. Iowa will take over now out of the 25. Iowa started with excellent field position. They started their own 44 and the Penn State 42. That's been a big part of that having the lead. They stalled out the last time, had to settle. On the ground, Kelly Martin working back to the line of scrimmage. Ellis Brooks made sure of that. 18 seconds left in the quarter. Like Penn State needed some time to catch their breath a little bit, get their feet underneath them and settle. And this game all of a sudden has taken on a new complexion. Amani Uwarie led the Penn State Nittany Lions out today on this Military Appreciation Day as they celebrate 100 years of service women in the armed forces. And then Uwarie able to present the flag to his mom, who was active Navy. And it's currently in the reserves. So a proud moment for mom and her son. Penn State still trails 12 7 as we open up quarter number two. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Tom McShea. Nate Stanley in trouble, and he'll just get it away. John Reed was chasing down Stanley. There's no foul. The quarterback is outside the pocket. Third down. I really like this approach from Brent Pry. Your offense goes right down the field. You score a touchdown. You're back in the football game. You know if you're Penn State that Nate Stanley is not going to beat you running outside the pocket. He's pretty stationary. Now he's hard to get down, but I like bringing pressure on him, forcing him to move off platform. That's what Brent Pry told us and almost got the pass intercepted. James Franklin was wondering. And John Reed got a piece of that football. Stanley just two of eight for 43 yards. Third and 11. The 24. Good clean pocket. Now it breaks down. Stanley airs it out and overthrows his intended target, Brandon Smith. Castro Fields running with him stride for stride. This fourth down. You say what you want about the Penn State. Offensively, they have been up and down and herky jerky. You look at James Franklin running downfield with the Castro Fields there. This defense has been steady Eddie in the last couple of games. Colton Rastetter is on the punt. Last time we saw him, he threw a touchdown pass. 
KJ Hamler is back deep. Hamler and Penn State muffed four different punts a week ago and recovered them all. Hamler's got that one. Can't do anything with it. Remarkable turnaround by Texas. A lot of people think they're still a year away. This might be a pleasant surprise where they are right now. No question. That, the win over Oklahoma was legit. McSorley rolling and throwing at the feet of Miles Sanders. Again, it's taken a while for Penn State to sort of get their feet underneath them a little bit. You see their first three drives, a couple of three and outs, and then finally McSorley able to settle his guys down for the 85-yard touchdown drive. Well, they, they found something in that last drive, though. John Dotson made some big plays. Fryermuth made some plays. Would be surprised they keep going those directions. Here's Sanders again. And they'll look to push the pile out to the 30 yard line. That being said, yes. in last year's game, this Iowa defense, when Penn State had all those players, Gasecki, Deshaun Hamilton, and uh, Saquon Barkley, at the end of the game, Penn State only had 15 points. They had to score the last play to win, so this Iowa defense is not going to be easy to score on. Third down and seven. Here's McSorley going to be taken down at the 25. Dropped by Anthony Nelson. And McSorley is down and hurt. Fooled, and that's what led up to injury. Oh, that snap is over the head of Gillikin again and out of the end zone for another safety. The first time Gillikin couldn't handle the snap might have been a wet football. The snapper is Kyle Vasey. Wow. You don't see that too often. Two safeties in the same team in the one half. And that's not that's not a wet football. That is a brand new football that comes from the sideline after a timeout. So you can't blame this on the wet ball. This is just Vasey, Airmail, and Gillikin, and back-to-back -back blunders for Penn State. It's Rafael Checa who will kick it away. Smith Marset out past the 35, out past the 40 to the 43. You know, around the country, the score is going to flash. Right? Hey, I was up 14-7, <laughs> like a standard 14-7. Yeah, Two touchdowns, yeah. Sure. The only point scored by the offense is a field goal in this game. For Iowa, Torn Young on the ground for a few. Ellis Brooks makes the stop. Well, you've had all kinds of momentum swings in this first half. Penn State comes out down 12 0, and then they get the drive on offense. They get a couple of true freshmen involved, and they cut it to a five point lead. Now your quarterback's out. You have a safety. Who are you going to look to now? Well, the only other captain that plays on the offense or defensive side is Nick Scott, who's on the field now. He's got to get his defense fired up. Second down and five. Approaching midfield. Stanley. Able to get out of that pocket to Nick Eastley. Very short of the marker. Nick Scott did make the stop. Eastley is the senior from Newton, Iowa. And it's a third down and one. And Tommy Stevens continues to get loose on the Penn State sideline. Yep, one. Who knows what's going on inside the medical tent with Trace McSorley, but certainly Tommy Stevens got to be ready to come into this football game through his first touchdown of the season last week. Behind Kelly, the fullback. Stanley still got it. Got a throw, had a man wide open. It was Hawkinson. And Stanley knows he missed one. I can't tell you what it takes to make a fake like this. Watch Stanley. He's holding the ball. He's not looking behind him. That's like the bullfighter waiting for the bull to come out of the ring, okay? And sometimes you turn around, a guy's so wide open, you try to throw a perfect pass and you overthrow him. You got to take a little air out of that and just put it on him. Fourth and one for Iowa. These fans, well, they don't look concerned right now. <laughs> there is concern here in Happy Valley. For Trace McSorley, no one will ever question this guy's toughness. Nope. You see him on the sideline. 
Todd, what's the sense from down there? Well, they won't tell me anything official, but Trace came out of the tent. He has a big brace on his right knee. He's trying to loosen it up. He right away got on the bike, threw on his headsets and started talking to his coordinator, and then got off the bike and started to run a little bit. He was wincing as he was running. He was trying to make some lateral cuts. To be honest with you, he doesn't look that good, but now he's sh shaking hands with friends in the stands, and you know McSorley. My, my guess is he's going to try to give it a go. Greece, how about the play call here? Does this impact, is this impacted by the question of McSorley's return? I don't think so. I mean, you've got a one of a couple of options here if you're Iowa. Run the football to get the first down. You could pop back and pooch punt with Nate Stanley. You've got a lot of different options. Let's watch. Just try to get him jumping wow. off. They did. And Sharif Miller. Wow. Wow. Sharif Miller is a senior on this team. And you got to know in that situation. Offside with contact. Defense number 48. Five yard penalty results in a first down. Good job by Stanley. Boy. Well, Stanley's got a pretty good hard count. So it's a forgotten art in college football because very few quarterbacks are under center. We actually right. asked him to do his yes, hard count in, uh, in the production meeting a year ago. And he kind of looked at me. He said, do you really want me to do it? I was like, yeah, and he did it. It's pretty good. We should have had a camera and a microphone there. <laughs> Here's Stanley to throw. Is that a catch by Easley? He took that off the turf. No, they're going to say that hit the ground first. Greece, is there any way to tell if they were ever going to snap that ball or they would have called timeout if not for the jumping offside? The reason that offenses do it in that kind of window from the 40 to the to the 50 is because if you get the delay of game, it actually helps your punt. For the punt. Yeah, so I don't think they had any intention of snapping it. And there you have it. And she buys McSorley some more time to keep trying to get loose. Iowa 14 7. They benefited from two safeties. Why not? And looking for more. Alaric Jackson. See if he moved. Full start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty remains second down. Sophomore from Detroit. Yeah, it looked like Nate Stanley was going to change the play at the line of scrimmage, which is a little bit new for Iowa. They didn't do a ton of it last year under Brian Ferentz, but they're doing more and more because he trusts Nate Stanley. But when you change a play at the line of scrimmage, you can't do it in a herky-jerky fashion because your offensive line might jump. Third penalty against Iowa. They were not flagged a single time a week ago. First time since 2006 that happened. Here's Stanley in trouble trying to get out of there, and he can't. Drop back of the 45 by Robert Windsor. Kevin Stevens was there as well. Kevin Gibbons, I beg your pardon. Second sack. Kevin Gibbons over the center is becoming a matchup problem for Iowa. He's right here. It's just quickness. He gets rid of the, the right guard, Ferguson, and there's nowhere for Nate Stanley to go with that football. Had some hockey on the brain of Kevin Stevens. <laughs> We went to the Penn State Princeton hockey game here last night. Beautiful Pagula Ice Arena. Here's third and 20. On the ground, it's Sargent. On third and 20, they run and maybe get a couple. Micah Parsons came up. They love the true freshman from Harrisburg. Think he's going to be a future star linebacker at Penn State, where they've made many of those. Give credit to that defense for Penn State. They came out in a sudden change situation. Then Sharif Miller jumps off sides, gives them another first down, and they still stiffen up and get the uh, the punt from Iowa. Give that credit to those defensive players and Nick Scott. DeAndre Tompkins is back deep. Rastetter. Off the end of his foot gets a great bounce. Terrific Iowa bounce. Inside the Penn State 19 yard line. See who the quarterback is going to be. Well, I could see, I could see Trace McSorley coming back into this football game if he wasn't a mobile quarterback like he is. His game is movement. If he were like Nate Stanley and was a pocket guy, I could see him coming back in. But I think this is the right call, leaving him on the sideline and, and seeing what Tommy Stevens has got. Tommy Stevens checks in. He has thrown one pass all season. And that was a touchdown pass last week in Bloomington. Enters the game with ten and a half to play in the first half. 
Trailing 14-7 from his own 15. And Stevens will run on the quarterback draw and pick up four on the play. He wouldn't be out here trying to go if it was an ACL, so that's good news for Trace McSorley. Probably an MCL, but we're going to see Thomas Stevens. Stevens is going to keep it after faking it, and it's A.J. Epinesa who comes up to make the stop. So this is going to change what Iowa is probably going to do defensively. Tommy Stevens is a more physical downhill runner. Unlike Trace McSorley, I think Iowa knows where he's going to be most of the time, and they're going to force his hand. Third down and nine. As McSorley tries to stay loose, temperatures will creep into the high 30s as we progress. Looks like the rain has stopped. Third down and nine. Soggy field conditions for sure. Stevens trying to run for it, and somehow he slipped through for the first down. Tommy Stevens knifes through a couple of Iowa defenders for the marker. One thing you have to get ready for for Tommy Stevens is a more physical runner. It's 240 pounds, six foot five. You're not going to get him down with arm tackles. And Tommy Stevens, Steve, has waited four years for this opportunity. He came in. There was a tight battle between he and Trace McSorley three years ago. He lost that battle. Nobody back then knew how good that to McSorley was going to be, but this is his chance. Here he is a throw and throw deep for Brandon Polk. Trying to turn his body around, and Polk could not make the spectacular catch with Riley Moss on the coverage. This ball is a little bit underthrown, but still could have been caught by Brandon Polk. Gets away with a little bit of a push off, but that ball clearly could have been caught by Polk. But that's been the Achilles heel for number 10 for Penn State all season long has been the drops. He had two a week ago. One was it would have been a touchdown pass. And Iowa for the fourth straight game starting two not one two true freshman corners in Riley Moss and Julius Brents on the ground of Miles Sanders. And bring up a third down. Dangerous part of the field at their own 29. Here comes the blitz up the middle. It's picked up nicely. And Stevens passes too low for Juwan Johnson. And I bring up a fourth down. And Phil Parker, the defensive coordinator for Iowa, he's got a lot of trust in these two young corners. You mentioned both of them true freshmen in Brents and Moss, but he got a lot of faith in him. And I think you're going to see him be more aggressive in this second half with McSorley on the sideline. Doesn't have to worry about him running as much. And they're going to try to come after Tommy Stevens. And hey, let's watch this snap from Kyle Vasey and the catch on the punt from Blake Gilligan. Both have been problems. Both leading the safeties for Iowa. No problem with the snap. Some contact as Gilligan went down and stopped down at the 30 yard line. Looking for his 150th win at Iowa today. A special guy in his 20th season as head coach. Here's Torin Young leading across for a yard. Kirk Ferris, the longest tenured active coach in all of college football. I was at two coaches since 1979. Are you kidding me? Yeah, 85, 20 years, and now 20 years for Coach Ferris. Here's Stanley to throw on second and nine. Throw to an area that's occupied by Penn State's John Reed. Reed cutting across the field. And he won't get to the end zone. Blasted out of bounds by Tristan Wirfs. They'll mark him just shy out at the three-yard line. Another spark for this Penn State defense. It's John Reed. 
Nate Stanley has grown in so many different areas, but one of the areas that he needs to continue to grow is seeing the football field here. He's just trying to force this football in here to the flat, but look at Reed. He's got his eyes on the quarterback, knowing that he's got an opportunity to fall off on the corner route. That was excellent defense by John Reed, who needed to make a play for his team. I was just going to ask you, how, you know, how well is Iowa's offense actually playing today? They really have only scored a field goal Correct. from the offense. And they've got the 14 points on the board. Tommy Stevens back in there. Opportunity for Penn State to at least tie the game on first down and goal. It's Stevens. Going to keep it. Going to get there. Touchdown, Tommy Stevens. Extra point away from a tie score. And you wonder what's going through Trace McSorley's mind right now. <laughs> See him push him away. Well, give me the handshake first. I don't think that they had a, a plan for one of their choreographed <laughs> celebrations that which McSorley is known for. So let me just give you the straight handshake. But this is where Tommy Stevens really excels running the football powerful downhill runs inside the five yard line. They're looking to see if his knee was down before the ball crossed the plane. Jack Hockaday got enough of him. Yeah, that right knee definitely went down. So let's see where the football is when it goes down from our pylon cam. That's really close where the ball is when his knee touches. I think that's a touchdown. Knee goes down there. You can see his helmet and arms are yeah. across the, the goal line there. I think that was a good call. And based on the call in the field, I think this will stand. We asked Ricky Roddy, the offensive coordinator, about the touchdown pass last week. You know, you wonder how, how emotional these coaches get in his hometown of Indiana. After we do, the one on the field stands. Touchdown. It is a touchdown. Roddy said it's coincidence Stevens got to throw the touchdown pass at Indiana last week in his native state. Two years ago at Purdue, he had a chance to run in for a score, and as it was described to us, he fell flat on his face. <laughs> About the 35 with no one near him. So there he gets the rushing touchdown here in his new home. Pinnegar. But if you're injured, then the doctor's going to keep you out. You said a lot of things. You've been through it. You've lived it. The player knows a lot of the time. You know what that is, that feeling. Your players know all the time. I knew I was done. Yeah. I heard the pop or whatever that might be. We'll be interested to see coming out of halftime how different things might be. Here's Smith Marset from the five. Iowa all of a sudden find themselves in a tie football game. Smith Marset down the sideline, and he'll be knocked out by the kicker, Rafael Checa. Be some uh, rather interesting games next week around college football. Next week shapes up to be a dandy. It's a 49 yard return. And Iowa, they've had great starting field position really all first half long. Here's Sargent able to break free, and he has first down yardage. Penn State able to bring him down. Great field position for Iowa, but uh, can they capitalize? You said it. Both teams, both offenses have had trouble in this football game. We've got 28 points that have been scored in the game, but neither team offensively has 100 yards of offense. It's been blocked kicks. It's been turnovers. It's been safeties. All kinds of different ways that these two teams have scored, but it hasn't been on offense. Special teams responsible for 11 points today in those two safeties, and yet it's 14 all. Looks like another Big Ten home game, but you know better if you've been with us. On first down and 10, it's Sargent. Parsons brings him down. The clock winds under six minutes to play here in the half. You know, one of the things that's different about this uh, Iowa offense is, is the personnel groups. You see Penn State, this is the defensive side. They're signaling in the personnel group, right? That's 12 personnel that just come into the game. That's one back and two tight ends. But see, they, they huddle, and so it's very difficult for the defense for Penn State to identify what formation and call their defense is because of that huddle. Sergeant again. He'll be stopped for a loss. Gross Matos. And the thing about it, Brian, is 
you know, with 12 personnel, it's not just ordinary 12 personnel. You've got two unbelievably talented tight ends in Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson. And Hawkinson especially gives Brian Ferentz flexibility because he can play in line as a blocker and he's a darn good blocker. But then you can flex him out and use him as a receiver and create mismatches. Right, which changes your call as a defense, right, Todd? Exactly. See all this communication going on out here because they just came out in this different set. There's two tight ends lined up up here. They're not attached to the formation. Stanley throwing. Excellent defensive play. Oruwarie able to come up. Great speed in pursuit of that football to knock it away. Fourth down. Great job of communicating in that bunch set. Who's going to take who? You see him pass it off, and Oruwarie breaks on Smith Marset to prevent the first down throw. Brent Pry told us he couldn't change his whole defense for that two tight end set that Iowa loves to run. Six days, you can't change everything you've done already. It's a 49 yard field goal attempt now for Racinos on the way. Rastetter said it was good all along and it was. 17 14 Iowa on the strength of a Miguel Racinos 49 yard field goal. What a boot that was in these conditions. KJ Hamler is back in his own end zone. Four and a half to play. We'll see who's coming out of quarterback for the Nittany Lions. And Hamler will just take a knee. Well, during the break, during the break, we saw Trace McSorley and Tommy Stevens playing catch. At one point, McSorley walked over to James Franklin, his head coach, and said, Coach, I'm ready to go. And then James Franklin had to walk over to Tommy Stevens and say, Tommy, sorry, thanks for what you did. But McSorley's coming back in. He tapped him on the rear, and you could see the frustration and disappointment from Tommy Stevens at that point. But clearly, McSorley told us, Coach, I'm ready to go, and he's back in now. First down and 10. Interesting development here. McSorley comes out throwing and completing to DeAndre Tompkins. So we talked to Ricky Ronnie, sorry, Grease, and he was talking about how Tommy Stevens, like the best team guy he's ever been around, and how great that quarterback room is. Listen, if Trace McSorley comes up to you on the sideline and says he wants to play, he's going to play. He's earned that right. That's the bottom line. It's his job. McSorley. Try the other side on for size. Mac Hippenhammer targeted for the first time. Now the question is, as a coach on the sideline, I'm going to watch Trace McSorley intently. If there's a difference in Trace McSorley now well, that he's on the field, I am not going to put him in harm's way. If he cannot defend himself, then at that point, I got it. You're a senior. You're a captain. But I'm protecting you, and I'm going to take you off the field. But you got to prove to me on this drive that you can stay safe. His mobility is so much a part of his game, more so this season than ever. One of six third down conversions so far. Make it one of seven. Misfires on Miles Sanders' time. Well, you just alluded to it, Steve, that the mobility is such a big part of his game, and especially this year when the wide receivers, a bunch of young receivers struggling to get open, a lot of drops on the year. The percentage is extraordinary high in terms of targeting and drops. So if he is limited to the pocket, I think in addition to trying to protect him, you've got to make a decision if you're James Franklin, which quarterback am I better off with in the second half? Well, Todd, and it also takes away your run game, right? Because he's been your best runner all season. Fourth three and out of this first half. The snap was perfect. The punt is fine by Billiken. It has been an issue. It'll be down at the 35. From the 35 for Iowa, 349 left in the half. They have just one timeout left. On the ground, a sergeant. He spun around for a gain of one on the play. Right now, if you're Penn State, you just want to get in at halftime without giving up any more points. This defense has been up to the task all first half. They have limited Iowa's and their ability in their tight ends, which has been their most dangerous combination. But Brent Pry has come in confident after last year's game where he confused and really stymied Iowa offensively, and they've continued here in the first half. 
Sargent again trying to turn the corner, and he is slammed into by Cam Brown. The ball popped free, but it was out of bounds. Last week, Brown made his 100th career tackle at Indiana. He's become a big time hitter. That's the second ball that he has forced fumble. And don't forget, after halftime, they're going to get back their safety, Garrett Taylor, who was out in the first half because of a targeting hit last week. So they're going to get even more talent defensively in the second half. This feels like a big play of the game. Two to snap it. One. So you get the timeout in time. Timeout, Iowa. That is the third and final. Will be 30 seconds in length. Hey, how can you do that? Check Reese's math on that. <laughs> Noah Fant has been quiet in this yes. game so far. Hawkinson's made some noise. Third and four. Out of the timeout. And it's Nick Easley. Easley caught the touchdown last year at the half that put Iowa up 7-5 at Kinnick against Penn State. It's a game of six. Well, Nate Stanley last drive out through a real ugly interception. A chance for him to get back on track here before halftime. Great throw and catch there with Easley. Stanley just 4 of 15 passing for the game and yet leading 17-14. Somebody jumped on Penn State across the line of scrimmage. Let's see. Offside. Defense number 93. Causing the offensive player to move. Five yard penalty remains. First down. PJ Mustafer, the true freshman from Owings Mills, Maryland. It's the sixth penalty against Penn State so far today. Backs must love first and five. Lots to do. Here's Stanley. Sort of slings it out there. Sidearm to Brandon Smith. He has the first down yardage. Parsons made the stop, but again, no timeouts left for Iowa. Well, you know, if you're Nate Stanley, you know, Mama said there'd be days like this. You know, it has not been pretty, but still an opportunity to go down and get some points here before halftime would play a large part in his confidence going into half. There's nothing pretty about Stanley. We saw him out in warm-ups. He's not worried about his clothes, his hair. He is pure football all the time. Nate Stanley, a real quiet leader on this Iowa team. See if Jackson jumped for the second time, the left tackle. Psych. Faked you out. <laughs> Start. Offense number 77. Five yard penalty remains first down. Penn State is chosen to have the clock start of the snap. The clock will start of the snap. First and 15 just across midfield. From Iowa, trying to find Hawkinson. Penn State fakes the blitz. And now it's the crossing underneath the Easley, and he will skip out of bounds at the 36 of Penn State. Smart clock management and game management here from Iowa. You had a couple of penalties. You get behind the sticks. Don't panic. Don't try to force things down the field. Get the ball to Easley. Get it and get back on a more manageable down and distance, second and four, at the plus 36 in your business. Sergeant going to be thrown down for a loss. Gross Matos got all of them, and the clock will roll. Yeah, now you need to get a sense of urgency if you're Iowa. A negative run, the worst thing you could possibly have in that situation, lose yards and the clock's running. If I'm them, I'm going to identify Hawkinson and throw the ball down the field. They haven't been able to run it at all. Loss of four on the play. Issues with the snap. It's bobbled and it's loose.
second turnover for we'll Iowa. Fourth down. The clock will. Looked like it was recovered by Iowa. They signaled it was Penn State football. Boy, miscommunication from the start. Come out, Penn State. It's the first charge. So you saw James Franklin run onto the field to signal timeout. So Nate Stanley's coming up to make a check, and in that situation, the offensive line, the center, you're in a hurry-up situation. You're not anticipating a change of a play in that in that situation. So the center snaps it, thinking that uh, Stanley's called for the ball, and that's what led to the turnover. So Franklin trying to get an explanation. The official signal that was Penn State football. Franklin came on running on the field to call timeout. Looked like his assistants were grabbing him. You don't need the timeout. The clock would stop on the turnover. But now they say it's Iowa's football, and there's the turnover and the timeout. So if Iowa recovered the football, then I understand the timeout right. Right, to stop the clock. Obviously, there's the official right there pointing that direction. And so James Franklin is looking at that. And if that's a change of possession, why would you call the time? Right. And Ross Reynolds is handing the football to the official, and he's pointing the other way. So some chaos, some confusion. And it won't just be Tuesday night. We have our first college football playoff ranking show. That'll be a whole lot of fun. Check out Reese the guys at 7 Eastern. 44 seconds left in the half. Peyton Mansell is the quarterback now. Pooch punt. Stanley is in the bottom of your screen. He's open. Mansell trying to run. He'll be swung around and dropped by Gross Matos again at the line of scrimmage. I would get a little cutesy there. Well, I really don't like this call because Penn State still's got two timeouts, and now they're going to get the ball at the 42-yard line. Punt the ball down there. Get it inside the 20. You know that Tommy Stevens is playing quarterback. Don't give him anything. But now you just gave him the ball. It's like a turnover. I don't understand why he wouldn't punt down there. I don't get it either. You were expecting the quick kick, something like that. But it turns over on downs now. Nittany Lions have it. 37 seconds left. And two timeouts. With Trace McSorley, rather Tommy Stevens in there at quarterback. DeAndre Tompkins on the receiving end. You have to wonder if he's in because he has a stronger arm or if after that one series, Trace McSorley came back and, and said, I'm, I'm not ready to go. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out in the second half. And I wonder if McSorley was just getting the jump start, some more time in the locker room, maybe some more medical attention. That's why he would be leaving early with 30 seconds left. Well, I think it's pretty evident that the Trace McSorley you saw in those three or four plays was not the Trace McSorley that we're used to seeing. So maybe it was the coaches that looked at him and say, listen, this is not the kind of situation for you to be in there trying to be mobile with a knee injury. And our best chance to win is going with Tommy Stevens. And they have to win. Penn State has to win to get to where they want to be. At least a New Year's Six Bowl game where they were a season ago. Second down and one. With the ball at midfield. Tommy Stevens has run in for a touchdown. Stevens pocket breaks down had plenty of time not trying to get out of there and can't drop by Anthony Nelson but he does get a first down stop the clock momentarily get up on the line of scrimmage call a play or spike it but don't let time run off have a true freshman kicker in Jake Pinniger is long on the season which is his career long is 39 here Stevens throwing good throw to KJ Hamler just short of what we have as the field goal target line, but it is a first down. Seven seconds left, one timeout. That was a big throw from Tommy Stevens to the outside. Well done. Stepped up in the pocket. Question is here, you got time if you want to throw the quick out. But it looks like James Franklin's going to come in and kick this field goal with seven seconds. Would be 45 from here. Again, Pinnegar's career long and season long is the same as career is 39. Six seconds is, is really the, the threshold of whether you can run another play, but I agree with this decision just because of the inexperience that receiver. Guy catches it, tries to make a move. Take the uh, field goal now. And before the snap, 
And Pinnaker kicks it anyway. And that's always a good play by the kicker. Been safe. That's the third and final charge. You know, if it's Iowa, you think, all right, they're icing the true freshman kicker. But I was out of timeouts. So what's, the, what's the Penn State thinking there? <laughs> How did I know you were going to ask me that? <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> I ask the hard questions. <laughs> Les McShay wants to jump in. Any thoughts on that timeout? I'll let Greasy handle this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So Greasy, I don't. You know, I know you said, hey, you, you like the call in that spot, but with one timeout left, seven seconds, the inexperienced wide receiver, you would have even if he Listen, if turns I'm, up field, if, makes. If this was an NFL game, yeah. right, you run another play, you right. get seven or eight yards, right. and you call a timeout, guy goes down direct. But but these are young kids, right? I and I, if it were me, I wouldn't trust that the clock wouldn't run out in that situation. Even with one timeout. Even with the timeout. Okay, now they're out of timeouts because they just spent one. Here's Pinnaker from 45. Try and tie the score. And in the end, it works out for Penn State. Field goal is good. We're all tied at 17s. And how big was that decision there by Kirk Ferentz to come in with the backup quarterback and try, you know, something crazy there? He just gave three points yes. to Penn State. So some questionable coaching on both ends here as we approach halftime. Let's go back to that fourth down call from Kirk Ferentz, Brian Ferentz. You see, this is Nathan Stanley here, and. Back in the back is the backup quarterback, Peyton Mansell. And I'm not sure what they were trying to accomplish here. They're going to throw it back. They're trying to throw it back, and then they were going to throw it to Hawkinson on a throwback to the tight end. And it just, just went awry. Just not, don't know that it's worth the risk at that point. It does cost three points. It's a short kick. That'll be caught at the 25. They're going to run the clock off. Let's see. Still two seconds left, and we will have one more snap. Well, we've had a lot of ups and downs, a lot of back and forth. It's, it's been, been a dirty been game. Dirty game. It's been a dirty, messy Big Ten game, <laughs> and but, we mean that with affection. But this is the kind of game we expected, right? A close game. This is going to be a fourth quarter game, and we're going to have who knows who comes out of quarterback in the second half for Penn State. And Iowa just has not been able to get anything going offensively, so both defenses have gotten the upper hand. Ooh, two fourth quarter games in a row potentially. All right. Getting hot, Grease. <laughs> 17 all. And again, Iowa will get the kickoff to open up the second half. It has been a very, very entertaining first half as the rain has mostly subsided. Don't worry about it, the sports information director. So McSorley said he is good to go. And this is the season on the line really for Penn State to get to where they want to be a New Year's Six bowl game. They cannot afford to suffer another loss here. This is the beginning of this three game stretch everyone has been focusing on for Penn State. And those three game stretches at Michigan and home to Wisconsin. They're great but you got to win the first game and that is here against Iowa. See Garrett Taylor back uh, in the ball game. He was out in the first half because he was suspended for a uh, targeting violation in the game against Indiana. So right back in the first play of the game. Chris, I don't want to just gloss over that first incompletion by Stanley. It looked like he was going for Noah Fant, and that is significant. We didn't see any of Fant in the first half. First target to Fant. He's been their most explosive player. They got to get him involved in the second half. On the ground. To Makai Sargent's got the first down. He'll stay on his feet. And an excellent run. Gain of 24. The key to these plays for Iowa is the backside cutoff. You see here, Alaric Jackson gets the cutoff on Etor Matos. And second level for Makai Sargent. He's the more explosive of the three backs. And you get him to the second level, it's hard to get on the ground. Saw so Nick easily blocking downfield there as well. First down and 10 approaching midfield now. Not this time. Sargent's going to be wrapped up. It's Gross Matos who is piling up the statistics. Must be his third tackle for a loss all game. Kevin Gibbons was the first player there. Uh, he got the best of Jackson on that go round. Gross Matos is a talented player, 6'5, 260 pounds. He's young, just a true sophomore. 
He's been known as a pass rusher. He had a sack to seal the game last week against Indiana, but now he's getting better and better against the run. He had 10 tackles, two sacks last week. Career highs for him. Must have three of the six tackles for loss so far by this Penn State defense. Here's second and 14. Stanley trying to set up the screen and overshot Sargent. His problems could have gotten worse, nearly intercepted. Oruwarie is always in the right spot. As the wind has started the whip up, the temperature has dropped down and it's sort of misting again. Uh, as you look at our, yeah, our month, that's more than misting. That's that's rain. And that's that's this is where now towards this, the latter half of the first half, I don't think that the ball security was an issue. But now as it starts to rain again, that ball gets slick. And it's just started in the last 10, 15 minutes. Two of nine on third down conversion so far for Iowa. This is third down and 14. Stanley steps and fires. Looking for Easley, nearly had him. Easley was looking around for a flag, see if somebody tugged on his shoulder, but it's incomplete fourth down. You know, Todd, Nate Stanley has not looked like he's been in rhythm all game. This this ball thrown way before Nate Easley makes his break. If he waits a half second more, he might have had him in the slot. You know, and early in the game, Penn State was getting a lot of pressure on him, and I wonder if he's kind of sped up his clock. But to be perfectly blunt, for a guy who I think can play in the, at the next level, we talked about how he still has room to grow, but today has been one of his worst passing performances that I've seen in 21 starts. Rastetter. The punter who threw a touchdown pass earlier in the game. And that punt will be stopped and down at the 23 yard line. And that's where Penn State will take over. It's a 33 yard punt by Ratstetter who threw a touchdown pass to Sam Brinks. If you're just joining us, it was a wild first half, couple of safeties. We'll see how well he can move around here. First down and 10. McSorley underneath to KJ Hamler. He'll turn the corner first down. Out of about the 45 yard line. Getting KJ Hamler involved early. McSorley failed to throw a touchdown pass last week. Well documented. He had thrown a touchdown in 34 consecutive games. November of 15 was the last time he had a football game without throwing a touchdown pass prior to last week. So that streak came to an end at Indiana in a win. McSorley off the fingertips of Tompkins. Everybody needs to relax. That is not a drop. Everybody very focused and concerned here at Penn State about the drops. We talked to Ricky Ronnie about that. He said it can get in the kids' heads. I mean, that's all they're hearing. And he said what he does is he doesn't tell the receivers, hey, catch the ball. Thanks. That's that's right. That's the <laughs> worst it. thing a coach can say. Hey, block better. No, well, how do you block better? How do you hang on to the football? Second and ten. That's how you hang on to the football, make a grab. KJ Hamler stopped by a body hooker. It's going to be short of the marker, third down. I think what's interesting is you would think, you know, that all the youth at, at the wide receiver position and, and the, it's starting to rain, right? It would tell you that Penn State should try to run the football, right? But their best running back has been Trace McSorley and the RPO, the zone read system. And without his mobility now, he's to just turn around and hand it to, to, to Sanders is not going to work. So that's why I think you see them throwing the ball here three out of the first four snaps. And Iowa knows it too. Iowa's defense knows it too that McSorley can't run the way he did, let's say, a week ago. Although he takes off here on cue. Trace McSorley runs just fine down the sideline for the touchdown. 51 yards for the score. The knee looks just fine. You were saying. Exactly as I was saying. <laughs> we, we were saying. Well, what did I say coming coming into the second half is listen, you never count this kid out. I mean, he is one of the best, if not the best competitor that I've seen in 11 years covering college football. I'm not going to count that kid out. He's tough, smart, and he's a leader. He's a winner. Well, we were just saying Trace McSorley looks like he's his old self running the football. And he took off for 51. 
Tying his right, right in our face, huh? <laughs> Tying his career high long. He ran for 51 against Ohio State. But how did he get that wide open? And I think you look back and Phil Parker taking a little bit of a risk here. He's got no safety in the game. It's third and short here. Watch the linebacker Hockaday. He's going to go with the back Sanders. And when he does that, there's nobody left for Trace McSorley. It was an aggressive play call from Phil Parker. Great play call on the opposite side from Penn State. And Trace McSorley into the end zone for a huge touchdown. McSorley came in having rushed for 189 more yards this season already than all of last season. And he's piling up the numbers. Here's Sargent now trying to get first down yardage on first and 10. And he does have it. 24 17. A game that started out awful for the Nittany Lions. They have their first lead of the afternoon. First down and 10. Out of the 35. It's Sargent again, Pickings Hole staying on his feet, and he will be thrust forward for another first down. Makai Sargent, the sophomore from Key West, Florida, gets 12 on the play with some help from his friends. Fully anticipate Brian Ferris to make the adjustments at halftime in the run game. They didn't do it very well in the first half, but now they're coming off a little bit more power run. You're getting Makai Sargent involved in the run game, and you see the effort. The second, uh, second level gets the first down. 61 yards for Sergeant Grease mentioned earlier they have not had a 100 yard rusher all season. They also haven't beaten a ranked team all season. Oh, Iowa got away with a false start there from Hawkinson made it look like he was looking for the adjustment. Get it away with two on the play clock. It's Sergeant again for about five. Koa Farmer has been rather quiet today. Farmer comes up and makes the stop. The only California kid on the Penn State roster. If, I, if Iowa wants to get to the Big Ten Championship, you're going to have to win these hard fought games on the road. And Brian Ferentz understands that he's got a quarterback that has been shaky at best, but he's got to settle him down. And the best way to do that is to run the football. Torn Young now checks in. He's behind Austin Kelly, the fullback. And they give it to Young. Back to the line of scrimmage. And nothing else doing there. Third down. Lee Stanley's passing numbers are ugly. Six of 20. 71 yards wow, and on down. third down yeah well I understand it's tough conditions but find your best player find your matchup and that's Noah Fant you got him lined up in the slot right here it looks like he's one on one with Nick Scott Deasley in motion top of your screen third and five here comes the pressure up the middle it's picked up nicely Stanley underneath overthrew his intended target Nick Easley had him and then he didn't that's tough. This is an easy throw. Just coming across the line of scrimmage here, you'll see easily. It's a shallow cross. And as a quarterback, you just want to put this ball a foot in front of the numbers, and, and that's that's not even close. I mean, that's in another zip code. And Nate Stanley has been good in these situations, but he's got to figure it out today. Oh, for his last four. How has Penn State taken Fant away? How does he take him out of the offense? They're not even going his direction. That time Nick Scott was one-on-one. -on -one. I'd take a shot with the kid. Fourth down and five. Rastetter will take his time, put it away. It takes a bounce for Tompkins at the 15, trying to reverse field, and that's not going to happen. Take right after that embrace with his coach, got the next hug from Tommy Stevens, too, who was right there to cheer on his teammate. Miles Sanders on the ground for about five. Amani Hooker tripped him up. Hooker was a monster last year in this game. He had 13 tackles. In his first start, and that came against these Nittany Lions in that classic game they played at Kinnick Stadium under the lights. And maybe we've got something special brewing here in a seven point game, nine minutes to play in the third quarter from Happy Valley. Take it to Handler, give it to Sanders. Hockaday and Nelson weren't buying the fake. Maybe they should have given Back it to Handler. Well, the, the strong suit of this Iowa team. 
is this defensive line and we haven't mentioned them in, in quite some time I think since the first quarter they give up the big touchdown run to McSorley but guys like Epinesa Nelson Parker Hesse the leader of that defense and the spirit they need to show up here in the second half third down and seven this would be a good spot for that showing blitz here it comes late it's picked up nicely McSorley gets it out and could not find Hamler Hooker had the coverage and it's fourth down and that was a great job by the offensive line of Penn State picking up that pressure but again you see Hamler and these wide receivers unable to separate from man to man coverage and really know where to go with that football OJ Mudia came on the blitz fourth down and seven Gillikin. This was where the safety happened. Well, the first block punt that led to the safety. And then the other safety was down at the other end of the stadium. Fourth and seven. Gillikin gets that one away. What a punt that is. And it will be down. Eight minutes even left. Passing Nick Easley. Fun time at Pagula Ice Arena it is gorgeous. Sergeant stopped by Sharif Miller. Third down upcoming time. What a play by Sharif Miller there, number 48. Watch him stack the edge. And with his hands, he holds off the block, he locates the ball carrier, and is able to disengage and make the play. I, this defensive line has been dominant for the most part tonight. Pass rush, run defense, and Miller really has been the anchor. Miller's been great, Todd. Kevin Gibbons, who they moved from Defensive end inside to defensive tackle and Robert Windsor. We said his name five times in the first 10 minutes of the game. Third and seven. Stanley is swallowed up by Etor Gross Matos, who is taking over this game from that defensive line spot for Penn State. Coming off the edge. They took over the game a week ago in the fourth quarter. Gross Matos and Shaka Tony and beat Indiana single handedly. This time he just gives a club to Larry Jackson and no time for Nate Stanley to get rid of that football. This defensive line for Penn State's taking over this game. Ninth tackle, second sack. Hamler is back deep. Four tackles for loss so far. Gross Matos having himself a ball game. Rastetter will boot it away. Hadler able to handle that cleanly and step up to the 45. So Penn State already leading by seven. I had one of my Buffalo pals talking with Greece, and he said it was like your dad used to do to Buffalo, too. <laughs> Not welcome in Orchard Park, New York. DeAndre Tompkins, a solid throw there by McSorley. Here come the Nittany Lions to the 40. You know, one of the things I think is interesting about a quarterback when you're injured and you, you limited your game, right? Trace McSorley, he's not going to do a whole lot of lateral stuff. We saw him run for 51 yards on a touchdown. Yeah, we did. But I think he's going to focus on throwing the football from the pocket a little bit more. There he is, setting it up nicely. It's K.J. Hamler down the sideline. Hamler turning into his go-to guy here. You mentioned the trust in the first half. Needing to trust a player, and Hamler's the guy. There is a flag down on the field. We'll see if that's coming back. There's no foul for an eligible receiver downfield. The pass is behind the line of scrimmage. First down. That's my favorite penalty. Pick up the flag. Pick it up. No foul. James Franklin. Coaching in his 100th game today as head coach. Record at Penn State of 41 and 19. Hamler has four catches for 57 yards. Penn State on the move at the Iowa 28. First down and 10. Pressure up the middle, it's picked up. McSorley had a wide open target in Brandon Polk. And McSorley threw it over his head. Polk only goes 5-9, but still. Wonder there if he's just struggling to drive off that back foot. Obviously, his, his right knee is the drive knee as a passer. and Just looked like he, he didn't have the natural stroke that he normally does on that throw. 
Yeah, you, you got to change your whole mechanics, right? I mean, you work so hard with your mechanics from day in and day out, and when you can't push off, it changes. McSorley got it batted down to the line of scrimmage and nearly intercepted. Anthony Nelson got a hand on it, nearly wound up with the pick. It's Matt Nelson. He goes six foot eight. And when he raises his arm, he's about seven five. And uh, you can see where he was going. He's going to Tompkins with that football. And they, that's what they coach, these, these defensive linemen. And that's why I said early in the game, sometimes as a quarterback, you have to look off defensive line. If you stare down your receiver, he'll get that big mid on it. Second pass knocked down by this massive line. We told you last year in this matchup, they batted down six McSorley footballs. Here's third down and 10, five even to go in the third. McSorley can't get away. It's Anthony Nelson having himself a series. Anthony Nelson. Great rush there on the outside from Anthony Nelson. He's six foot seven and he uses that extension. Here he is working on Will Fries. Fries has struggled this season. He's struggled with confidence and McSorley knows it. He understands he's got a liability on the right side of the offensive line, but Nelson got to him in no time at all. Nelson, Brinks, the other Nelson, and Hesse, all four starters on that defensive line, all Iowa kids. This is a 49-yard field goal attempt for Jake Pinniger. On the way, and it is good. The true freshman kicker, who's an Iowa native, gives Penn State a 10-point lead. I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> a little roll reversal. His birthday's actually in July. Oh, so last July was uh, Hamlet time. Are you kidding? That's the best thing I've seen all season. She should be getting paid for that. Somebody out there with a record contract, record label. Sign her up. The sophomore from Brampton, Ontario. Good Canadian boy, if you will. Four minutes to go. Third quarter action. Penn State by 10. On the ground. Torn Young, the ball carrier. We have not seen Ivory Kelly Martin since he fumbled. The first fumble of any of the three running backs from Iowa. That's how they roll in Iowa, man. You fumble one time all season, get out. Yeah, yeah, they're going to protect the football. That's their recipe. Run the football, protect it, play good defense. At some point, you got to throw the football and you got to get to your best players. Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson, they're both in the game. Third and ten, this would be a good point to do that. Stanley Cox and fires and finds Brandon Smith. Excellent effort by Smith to get the first down yardage. Over Warrior did everything he could, but couldn't hold him off. Needed 10, got 11. Well, Smith goes 6'3, 220 pounds. A good looking route there, right on the body. It's easy to catch despite the weather. And then the, just the power from Smith. He did not have the first down initially, but the extra effort got it. Ball out of the 36. Sergeant was nearly tripped up on first contact. Little second effort, able to buy him three yards. We click under three minutes left here in the third. Steve, time and time again, we see the safeties for Penn State. Nick Scott and Garrett Taylor in the second half here, making them play in the run game two, three yards downfield. What does that tell you? It tells you the safeties are filling fast. You have to start using play action and go down the middle of the field with the tight ends to make them pay. Second down and six upcoming. Bit of a draw to Sergeant. Maybe a yard on the play. The third down and five. So where are these super duo of a tight end group 
for, for Iowa we keep hearing about. We came into this game and I said it. I think this is the best tight end tandem in college football. They affect the game in ways that other tandems don't. And Todd, I have no idea why they haven't been targeted. Well, one reason is Noah Fant is struggling to get open against some smaller defensive backs. Even on the, the last pass, John Reed, the cornerback, who's 5'10", 180 pounds, was getting physical with him. That's going to be the next step in his development, is learning how to get off the press. Here's Stanley. Had the pump, and that went off the hands of Nick Easley. Again, when you study Iowa, all you read is about these star tight ends and the rivalry they have with each other. Making plays, the leading receivers, nothing doing this afternoon. You see where Stanley wants to throw this football. He wants to throw it to the outside slant, but Easley comes back outside. You can't do that on a double slant. That's the big no-no, and you got guys that are trying to make plays that are not there on the offense for Iowa and breaking down the structure of the route. Easley that time prevented the first down. Colton Rastetter wearing him out in this quarter. This is his fourth punt of the quarter. It still has a minute and a half left. Hamler. He'll scurry out of bounds out to the 22 yard line. Can you imagine we're talking about Florida like this after they finally lose at home this year to Kentucky after 31 years. It's amazing right how down people were and down at the swamp and Gatorland and they've completely turned things around. Dan Mullen in his first season there. Here's Miles Sanders on the ground. So, uh, 70 seconds left to play in this third quarter. Penn State scoring 10 points here in the third. That is their 10 point lead, 27 to 17. You mentioned Michigan being off Iowa. Nick Sorley to throw. And nearly intercepted. That was close. Jake. Gervas nearly picked it off. DeAndre Tompkins, the intended target. McSorley missed this throw. It's supposed to be on the sideline. That's about five yards inside of where that ball should have been. And he's very lucky that Jake Gervas didn't intercept that ball. Give credit to Tompkins for getting an arm in there to break it up. Third and six. It's a two deep defense with man underneath. Phil Parker would never have played this defense with a healthy Trace McSorley. McSorley airing one out, has a man. It's Hamler had to hold up, but he's able to bring it down. KJ Hamler on the receiving end of a big play. 39 yards on the pitch and catch. Now Gino Stone is the safety over the top, and Hamler runs right by. Amani Hooker, that's that's Stone's play to make. In a two deep man under defense, there's no way you should be able to throw a ball like that that high in the air without the safety making the play on it. And that'll bother Stone more than anyone else. This was his dream school, Penn State. He made nine unofficial visits to try and be a Nittany line. They said, hey, we're going to offer you, we'll get to you, we'll get to you, and they never got to him. And he said that really upset him. He was on his way to Kent State, wanted to play at his dream school, Penn State. And it never happened. 27 17 Penn State as we open up the fourth. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Todd McShay from State College PA. Here's Trace McSorley on the run. Again, the need looks just fine, second and short. Hey, they honored a bunch of Penn State legends at halftime. And we want to say hello to Matt Millen. He's been having some uh, recent medical difficulties. Matt left Penn State and 1979 is. Receiving excellent treatment. All of us wish our close friend and fellow broadcaster Matt Millen all of our best wishes. He's a championship guy. Yeah, one of the best we've ever had at, at ESPN. And uh, we're thinking about you, Matt. Get better soon, each and every day. Miles Sanders has first down yardage. Feels like Penn State's starting to take this game over with a 10 point lead. There's no question. It started with their defense, and that defensive line has really stymied Iowa in the second half, held them scoreless. They really have got nothing going on offense. And now this offense for Penn State and the running game is starting to take hold. Back on the ground is Sanders. 
Again, it's a 10-point lead as Penn State looks to tack on to that lead. 14 minutes to go here in the fourth, and, and Penn State fans know these numbers uh, a little bit, bit too well. I think that's a negative approach here in the fourth quarter, but you see what has happened, and certainly everyone uh, in the Penn State faithful is aware. The difference, in my opinion, in this game is their defense has really controlled. Second and four. McSorley off the play fake, throwing for it, and it was too high, too high. Fryermuth was the intended target, and how he is writhing in pain down on the field. Third down and four. Steve, Tommy Stevens is in the game right here. He's run three or four routes as a receiver in these situations. McSorley, again, proving he's just fine, taking on some people. But not until he had the first down. Gervas takes a couple of shots at McSorley there. But he wanted the first down and he got it. I mean, it's just the epitome of toughness. You know, this kid is not going to be denied. And time and time again, he's been questioned. Not tall enough, not fast enough, not a strong enough arm. Everybody has been on this kid throughout his entire career, and this is a fitting way for Trace McSorley to come back in this football game after getting hurt in the first half and lead his team. Fryermuth is back in there. True freshman from Merrimack, Massachusetts. And it's a fumble! Too tricky, Penn State! And it's recovered by Jack Holliday. Hockaday. Turnover at the worst possible time. The first Nittany Lions turnover of the game. Looks like they tried to get a little cute with Hamler coming this way, but this is between Sanders and McSorley. The exchange there never seemed to be right. But you see Sanders look back, and that's a costly turnover for Penn State. You're going so well with, with McSorley running the ball and throwing the ball, and you try to get a little bit too cute in the red zone, and it comes back to bite you. Here's Iowa, down 10, 12.57 to go, quarter number four. And it looks like motion. If yeah, that's Jackson, the left tackle. Offense, number 77. Five yard penalty remains, first down. That is Alaric Jackson, the sophomore from Detroit, third time. Yeah, and the reason why we keep seeing this, Steve, is because they're changing the play at the line of scrimmage. We saw a corner coming off the edge that time. Nate Stanley did try to change the play, and the offensive line wasn't on the same page. Backs him up five, first and 15. From inside the five. Stanley from his end zone throws across the middle. It's Hawkinson. Wide open and a beauty to get him out of danger. TJ Hawkinson, third catch of the game. 20 yards on the play. If you notice on that throw, which might have been the best throw by Stanley all day, hanging in the pocket, open receiver, and just drove it in there. But he hit his hand, I believe, on the back of a helmet oh. on someone's pads, and he's been kind of wincing and trying to shake it off since. Yeah, Todd, it was Robert Windsor coming up right up the middle, and that, that's, that hurts. That hurts any time, but when it's cold and wet out, it hurts even worse. Play fake. Stanley. Going to be hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Tried to get it to Smith Marset, but he had to throw that one too early. The pressure coming from Penn State. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on that right hand of Nate Stanley because that ball came out weird. Wasn't on target at all, and maybe after this play, we'll go back and take another look at that hand coming down on the helmet. A play ago. 9 of 27 for Nate Stanley. Stanley throwing, yeah, there it is, that same play. It's Noah Fant. Welcome to the football game. Noah Fant, his first catch, and it comes 12 minutes left in the fourth, a game of 22. And this is just the, the run pass option, puts the ball in the belly of the back, and you try to split the defense with Fant. I, but honestly, I can't tell you, I have no idea why they haven't done this before. I understand Todd said that he's been having trouble getting open. He's six foot five. <laughs> right. If there's a corner guarding him, throw the ball up and let him go get it. 
He was their leading receiver coming in in terms of receptions. Hawkinson had one more receiving yard, and he's wide open there. And Stanley can't hit him. And Fant is frustrated, as is Stanley now, and he quickly grabs the hand. Yeah, something's wrong with that right hand. This is as wide open as you're going to get in college football. There he is, and the ball just too short. And Stanley goes right back to that. I don't know. He's not looking at that hand. That's just a missed opportunity. You gotta make those plays. If you want to compete in the Big Ten, you got a chance. Northwestern beat up on Wisconsin, so now you control your own destiny in the fourth quarter on the road. You gotta make that play. Down 10 with the football. Again, a little low. That time Smith Marset able to bail him out and make the grab. Remember the great play fake by Stanley earlier? Had a wide open man for an easy touchdown. And he yep. misfired on that one too. You'll never have an easier touchdown yep. pass. That was Hawkinson in the first half when they were trying to go for the juggler to go up two touchdowns, and, and Trace McSorley was hurt. And now he missed the fan. Here's a huge third down for Nate Stanley. You got to make this. Again. Stanley skips it off the grass, incomplete. Looking for Gronenweg. Now he's holding that thumb again, but that's a third straight low throw, Steve, and you just got to drive it. Use your feet, your legs. Don't just depend on your arm. He's not following through right there. That ball's going right in the dirt. And Brian Ferris needs to calm him down, say, listen, What's going on here? Is your hand OK? Tell me, give me all the information that I need, because that's not the Nate Stanley we watch play for the first part of the season. Ryan, these are middle school throws. So this is a bad time to ask you about the big board there, McShay? Yep. OK. Rastet or another punt. Tompkins will let it bounce. Worst starting field position of the game, as you might expect, from their eight-yard line. Sanders, nothing doing. That'll go for a loss. Matt Nelson. Steve, let's go back and look at yeah. Nate Stanley. This is from right above. Watch his right thumb come back, back on the helmet of his center there. I can tell you that hurts more than you can imagine. And the question is, did it get bent back and was there any ligament damage? And the reason that's important is because your thumb supports the ball. And if you can't pressure the other side of the ball with your thumb, it's very hard to throw it. I'm almost surprised that play doesn't happen more often, both in practice and in games, whether it's your own guy's helmet or the other team's helmet from an on-rushing pa uh, pass rusher. McSorley on the throw. Intercepted. It's picked off. It's Geno Stone. Stone inside the 20. Down the sideline. Touchdown. Geno Stone from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, who begged them to let him play at Penn State. Comes back to burn the Nittany Lions with the score. That's two turnovers the last three snaps by the Nittany Lions, and the complexion of this game has just changed greatly. Wow. The kid that grew up watching this program was no, there was no bigger Penn State fan than Stone, and he's talked about wanting to get revenge and how big this game is for him. He was beat earlier in the game for a big play by Hamler. Now he makes a big play of his own. Extra point on the way and good. It's a four point game with 10 minutes left. So turnovers for Penn State here in the fourth quarter really starting to rear their ugly head. It was the fumble on the missed exchange between McSorley and Sanders which led to the Iowa turnover and now McSorley makes the mistake trying to force this ball on the second level not reading Stone the safety who drove perfectly and then finished in the end zone. Think about this. The Iowa special teams and defense has accounted for 18 points here today. 18 of their 24. We showed you this earlier. Maybe it's a little more relevant now yeah. as we creep towards 10 minutes left here at home for Penn State with a three point lead and they will get the football a defensive score a pick six by Gino Stone again nine unofficial visits Greece couldn't give him one official one nine unofficial didn't want him was going to Kent State said hey I'll try Iowa on for size and he comes back home. Wow what a story. 
KJ Hamler from the two. Finds a seam. There's the burst. Down the sideline. KJ Hamler, what a return! It's KJ Hamler to the rescue. Sixty-eight yards on the return. Looked like there was a scramble there for the ball at the end. Oh yeah, he's down clearly. What an explosive play from KJ Hamler. You kick this guy the ball, and and he's the most explosive player on the Penn State team. And whether his mom's making a rap for him or not, he, he, she called him the human joystick. And yep. on, on that return, he certainly juked a couple of folks. He had a 58 yard kick return last week. Mom and Dad, maybe a little too cold out there to be dancing right now. See about after the game. So that's how Penn State answers. Here's McSorley on the quarterback draw. Gervas makes the stop. KJ Hamler is fun to watch in all aspects. See how Penn State decides to play this year. Up three. The clock's ticked under 10 minutes now, and they're in the red zone fringe area. How aggressive will they be with Trace McSorley? On the ground of Sanders, trying to turn the corner. And that Iowa defense comes up for the big stop. Julius Brents comes up to make the stop. A true freshman from Indianapolis. I should know that Stanley was just getting looked at again by the trainers and just trying to get comfortable with, with the tape that they put on his throwing hand and around his throwing thumb. And in the meantime, Mansell, the backup, Peyton Mansell, has been warming up the entire time just in case. That's Petrus, the third string quarterback on the right. Third and five. Good protection. McSorley on the run now. And DeAndre Tompkins never turned his head back to the quarterback. Give credit to that secondary for, for Iowa. It's, it's the coverage. Two true freshmen, as we mentioned, at corner on the outside. And you've got new safeties in there. And there's nowhere to go with that football. And typically, Trace McSorley would escape, extend, and then allow those guys to get open, but that knee's just prevented him from that lateral movement. This is a pressure kick for the true freshman, Jake Pinnaker. Already hit from 45 and 49. This from 44. And the kid looks cool. The Iowa native has extended Penn State's lead to six. You got an opportunity here with eight and a half left, only down six, an opportunity to win this football game. You got to figure it out. It's been a long time since Iowa's been in a tight game where you really have to go back to the, the loss against Wisconsin. And then before that, the game against Iowa State. Really, two games on the schedule have been in close games. Another amazing college football Saturday across this great country of ours. On first down and 10, it's Torin Young, stopped by Sharif Miller. And we'll keep a close eye on Nate Stanley. Yeah, and the work ahead of Iowa offensively is, is great because Penn State has been up to the challenge in the second half defensively. They have not allowed Iowa's offense past the 48-yard line this half. So if Iowa's going to win this football game, they're going to have to do something here they haven't done yet this half. They pumped it on five straight possessions. Prior to that was halftime. Prior to that, they turned it over on downs. The Iowa offense has accounted for two field goals. Otherwise, but all defense and special teams for the Hawkeyes. Here's Stanley throwing underneath and completing to Noah Fant. And he's got the first down. His second catch of the game, maybe saving his best for the fourth quarter. Well, he should be fresh. <laughs> Todd, there was some explosion there from Noah Fant. You see how he pulls away from the linebacker. Yeah, and it's just about getting him a clean release and get going in his route because he's, he's the most athletic tight end in all of college football. He's basically a, a bigger wide receiver. So they've got to continue to find ways to get him off the line of scrimmage free. First down and 10. Underneath. It's Fant again. Cam Brown on the coverage. Fant came in with six touchdowns. Tied with Chase Jace Sternberger of Texas A&M for the most touchdowns in the country among tight ends. And again, 
That'll be a great part of the press conference post game. What was going on all game long with Noah fans? Well, I don't really care what was going on the rest of the game. All that matters is this drive right here. You get him involved, you go score a touchdown, and you're back up on top. They've run back to back the same play, one to one side and then the other to get him involved. 12 yards on that last play. 6.45 to go in the fourth. Stanley. Again, it's Noah Fant, and all of a sudden it's the Noah Fant show. You know what else I like about the approach here is Tell just me. little chunks. You know, not trying to push the ball down the field. You don't need to get it all in one one throw, but it's just little chunks, five, six yard throws, and you get a first down, and you're almost at midfield. Three consecutive completions to Fant for 12, four, and seven yards. Fant's brother went to, as a high school football coach, went on social media. He was concerned about the way his brother was being used after Fant suffered his first concussion. And that made headlines and grabbed a lot of attention. And Fant didn't miss a game. Here's Sargent turning the corner. Cross midfield down the sideline. If he didn't step out, he's tripped up at the 10 yard line. Makai Sargent rambles down the sideline and we'll see where they spot him. Big block by number 39 Weeding. Watch him come out and get the block on Oruarie and that allows Sargent to stay in bounds. Well, he's like out. He stepped out. Yeah. yeah. But a big time block from we we talk all about Hawkinson and Fant. Yeah. But Weeding is an integral part of this offense for Iowa. Weeding recovered a fumble earlier in the game. How many teams play three tight ends on a race? That's Iowa football. Iowa, Stanford, Michigan, you know, that's about it. Maybe Wisconsin. What about a 45-yard gain if it stands? Which either going to mark him out. I think he stepped out at about the 31-yard line. We'll take a look. And then they'll add some clock on as well. Yep. Like the uh, 31 and a half there. That's interesting now for Brent Pry, the defensive coordinator for Penn State. You know they've come out early in this drive and they've targeted Fant. You need to to figure out a way to maybe double team Fant, but if you do that, then you're opening yourself up to the run game. After review, the runner stepped out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Please reset the game clock to six minutes on the clock. So it goes as, as 20 yards instead of 45. They had it 20 seconds. <laughs> That's a lot of time. It took yeah. 20 seconds for him to go out. 10 yards, 12 yards. Noah Fant not in the football game. And a three wide receiver set with Hawkinson. Torn Young is back there now. That's Groenweg who went in motion. And there's a flag now. Ball start. Offense, number 74. Five left field remains. First down. That's Tristan Wirfs, who's a sophomore. He was the first true freshman of the Ferris era to start a game at offensive tackle last season. I think this is on the center render. You see three guys moving, even the quarterback moving. That ball was supposed to be snapped, and render points to his ears like, I can't hear you. This crowd's starting to make their impact. They flip it. To Smith Marset. And he's able to turn the corner. Stanley trying to get the block on Garrett Taylor. Gronoweg got it first. He flipped it to Smith Marset. And a big second down. It's interesting that Brian Ferentz chose to stay with that play call because that was the same play they had on before. And I think Penn State saw the motion and was able to communicate the reverse. Yards are close. Score is close. Rankings are close. Under five to go. Good one from Happy Valley. Fumbled snap by Stanley. Able to recover. And he'll throw it out of bounds. Had Nick Easley in the neighborhood. Boy, and Keegan Render is having a tough, tough drive here. This ball comes up way short and way to the left. And Nate Stanley did a nice job of just getting that ball and throwing it away in the vicinity of a receiver to avoid the intentional ground. Yeah. Third down and ten. Neither team's been able to convert on third down here today. Trailing by six. 
4.50 to go. Stanley able to get rid of it. It's Sargent out of the backfield for the first down. A massive play on third down and 10, Todd. Sargent, it really has been the spark offensively for Iowa in this second half. He, he usually isn't the top ball carrier, but you see here working out of the backfield, a huge cut to create the extra yards and to pick up a crucial first down for Iowa. Yeah, Todd, it's a great job of getting him the ball in the passing game. That's his first catch, but he already has 91 yards rushing in the game. 15-yard play there. Again, Iowa's not had a 100-yard rushing running back all season. He's at 91. More important things on the line here. Stanley pressure right up the middle hit as he throws. And it's well over the intended target Gronenwick's head. Aruwarie had the coverage. I'm okay with this play call in this situation. You get in that red zone fringe and you want to take a shot to the end zone to kind of seal this drive. I'm just not sure I would be targeting Gronenwick might take a shot with the tight ends. Kevin Gibbons got the stick on Stanley there. Second and ten. Pressure from the side. Trying to hit Sargent out of the backfield. It was too low from Stanley. Really nice job by Brent Pry and this defense for Penn State knowing that it's a passing situation. They bring pressure off the edge which forces Stanley to throw this ball over. You see Cole Farmer but watch Oruarie. He knows he's got his eyes back to the quarterback in zone and Todd comes up and makes the play. And you have to wonder too with Stanley with all that tape on his hand how wet is it getting with some of the hits he's taken going to the ground. That's a great point. 11th play of the drive that started from their own 21 yard line. This is the time where Shaka Tony wrecked havoc a week ago against Indiana in third and long. Good protection for Stanley. Throws has all sorts of time and able to connect. It's Brandon Smith has the first down inside the five. And you mentioned it, Steve. This is all about protection. Great job. Well, Eric Jackson's been up and down in this game so far. Keegan Bender has been up and down, but they give Nate Stanley time, and his, his thumb looked okay there, Todd. That was 14 a strike. yards on that play. First down and goal. Hey, what a ball game. Unbelievable. You know, Iowa doesn't really have a downhill pounded kind of back. You know, they've got three guys that are kind of scat back, but. Torn Young at 220 is their biggest guy. He's in there now. That's Fan in the slot. Fan wasn't ready. Fan didn't see him to snap the ball and it's picked off. Nick Scott with the interception. Noah Fan was not ready. He was still on the line of scrimmage long after Iowa had snapped the football. And Stanley tried to go to him. Nate Stanley tried to change the play Steve he's at the line of scrimmage trying to change the play it got loud down here by the student section you could see the Iowa coaching staff on the field wondering what was going on he's trying to change the play and they're trying to snap it before the play clock got to zero two that's why he was in such a hurry but you got to manage that situation better and not be risky with the football and Brian I'm standing probably 20 yards from where he was and I'm watching Stanley's eyes and he realizes he started yelling kill kill kill. He looked up to the clock and saw we went but about two seconds left and then that just rushed everything. The timeouts are always in your back pocket too. If you if you don't have enough time and you're confused just call a timeout. Huge huge swing in the game. And you wonder what implications a single play at the end of October can have on the national picture. Wow. 313 to go. Penn State still up six. Now they have the ball. See how they manage the clock. Back to that Nick Scott interception. What led up to that? Well, certainly you see this is Nate Stanley. He's trying to kill the play, but look at the play clock. He didn't have enough time to do that. So the play was doomed from the very beginning as a quarterback. If you're going to change something, you got to have enough time at the line of scrimmage to do so. Everybody was on different pages and it led to the big interception. And you could see on the top part of the screen, Fant is trying to signal to the other receiver that trying to kill the play. 
didn't think he could hear the quarterback Stanley with this loud crowd, so he wasn't paying attention as well. He's looking the other direction. What a stunning turn of events working against Iowa. As Penn State has the football. We'll see how they manage the clock as they come out throwing with 3.05 left. Nate Stanley is 16 of 40 for 183 yards, no scores, and two touchdowns. Well, and right here, if you're Trace McSorley, an opportunity to ice this football game. Iowa's got two timeouts, ticked under three minutes here. You get a first, another, another first down here, you might be able to end this football game. Boy, and what a second half it's been for Trace McSorley. On the ground, it's McSorley running between the tackles. And Iowa will spend another timeout. That's going to be one sore puppy tomorrow. Wondered how Penn State would manage this game up by six. They're making a little bit of a different approach here and running the football with Trace McSorley to make sure that you're taking time or timeouts off the clock. Last week, that took just 19 seconds off the clock. Again, it's McSorley between the tackles. Sam Brinks made the stop. Another timeout. Indiana would go on to score to make it a five-point game and able to score on the, well, not score, but able to, able to get the onside kick. And so then it became a thing. 221 left. Penn State up 30 to 24. Iowa has yet to beat a ranked team all season. Team we said based on Wisconsin's loss today, they control their own destiny coming in. Yeah, and they do, and they do in the Big Ten West. But uh, if they don't get a stop here on third and three, this ball game's over. Out of timeouts. It's McSorley again. Third straight run. Matt Nelson wraps him up for a loss. So the clock will wind. But Iowa will get the football back. They're going to get the football back with about a minute and a half left. We'll see what Blake Gilligan's able to do here from a punting standpoint. But you'd have to think that Nate Stanley thankful to get another opportunity after that key interception on the goal line. Not to mention that Noah Fant got going on that drive yes. and is in this football game. Three consecutive plays going to Fant. Again, it's been a tough afternoon for Gilligan. Coach Franklin said he's been in a slump recently. Had a punt block off a bad snap. That led to the opening safety. Then a bad snap was sailed over his head for Time another out. safety. Is your first charge. 30 seconds. Well, rebound, which they did against Florida today. You notice you shifted them in <laughs> a little late. <laughs> Grown away. Backpedaling from his 15. Trying to turn the corner. He'll run out of some people. And Iowa will start at the 23-yard line. It goes a 49-yard punt, so a good punt there by Gilligan. These are the two turnovers that allowed Iowa in the fourth quarter here, the fumble and then the interception. But uh, now Iowa needs to, they need to recoup after that last play down the goal line. You anticipate they run it in that situation. They tried to throw a little screen to Torrey Young. It backfired, and now this crowd He's going to make it hard on Nate Stanley. Penn State turning it over two times in a three snap span. 77 yards in front of Iowa for what would be a thrilling win. And the grab by Brandon Smith and an excellent tackle to make sure that Smith couldn't get out of there. Well, Castro feels the corner, took some risks there. He didn't get him on the ground. There's a lot of green grass beyond him. Maybe 77 yards. Here's Stanley to throw in the wind. Just too strong for Smith off his fingertips. Castro Fields again on the coverage. The wind really starting to whip up here. Yeah, you got to put a little more air on that ball. That was a great route by Smith. Castro Fields was beat. And if you give him a little bit more air, a little bit more room, he might still be running. I'd keep going at Castro Fields. He's clearly intent on taking some risks here with the game on the line. Oh, he's up around the line of scrimmage. This is also Gross Matos time. 65 ticks left. 
Stanley has time, throws underneath. Incomplete to Smith Marset. Castro fields excellent coverage there. It only takes a couple of seconds off the clock. You say you got to get the first down, but you also got to push this ball to the outside of the field because no timeouts really restricts where you can throw the ball on the field. Third down and 10 upcoming. And here's Fant in the slot. Can Nate Stanley finish off what's been an awful night? Can he pull it out? Stanley able to complete, and it is Noah Fant. What a throw, what a grab. I think they got to get up to the line of scrimmage because Fant came down inbounds. It was a great throw and catch, but time is of the essence here. Snap this ball before they wind the clock again for the first down. Now they start it. Penn State rushing four. All sorts of time. Now Stanley steps into one and throws, and it goes incomplete. 39 ticks left. Iowa cannot stop the clock. While we wrap up here, Texas A&M and Mississippi State about to get started in the SEC. That game will start over on ESPN News, and as soon as we're finished here, we'll bring it back over to ESPN for you. And their own 45. Stanley throws, and it is caught. A catch. It's T.J. Hawkinson with a jersey and pants full of mud. Wow. It's a gain of 18. Grease, he was so far into the bench, there's no way the officials could know if he hung on to that football. Wow, the ball. The on the field of a catch is under further review. He had that ball. He definitely controlled the ball. The ball definitely hit the ground, which it can as yes. long as you control the ball. That ball moves. This is this is a great angle of, of the toes in bounds. The other angle, I feel, will give them enough evidence to make the determination of a catch, no catch. But what an unbelievable effort from Hawkinson. I mean, that's that is an unbelievable catch. Athletic play. Now, this is not about the feet. This is about the control of the football. That is a tough, tough call. And again, what's critical here is the call on the field is a catch. Yep. Yeah, just my opinion here. I felt like he, he didn't have control of it with the first grab. When he re-established his hands on the ball, I felt like he controlled the ball. And then by definition, when he went down and the ball hit the ground, as long as that, that ball isn't, or the ground isn't helping him make the catch, it's a good catch. I think this call stands. What an effort, too. I mean, it was, he had one hand under the ball, and then the, his other hand, his right hand, was on top of the ball, and then to be able to shift it as you're sliding into the bench to make sure that you have control. Amazing play. Todd, he came out from the bench, and he had, like, <laughs> it looked like somebody had poured mud down the front of his jersey. I mean, he must have got back there by the Gatorade jugs and got mud all over him. Let me ask you, so when his foot taps down, though, Look at yeah. that. He went to a slip and slide with his pals. When his foot touches down, the foot, he does not have complete control. So he regains control as he's flying out of bounds after the fact. This will be interesting. This might be your ball game, too. After review, the receiver did not have control. Therefore, the catch is reversed. It will be five to ten at the minus 25 yard line. The clock is good. That's a tough call. I personally thought that was a catch. There's yep. enough evidence there to control the football and the ground not helping him make that catch. The ball can't touch the ground. That's a tough call. Especially when the call on the field is a catch. Yeah. Brought all the way back to the Iowa 45. As you heard, the clock is good. Not so good for Iowa. 34 seconds left. Two cracks at it. Third and 10. Penn State rushing four. Stanley will run out of it. We haven't seen much of this today. He's got the first down. Four, He'll stop the clock to move the chains to gain of 11. He's at the 44. 
Field goal doesn't do him any good. Got to have six, and then maybe seven. Here's Stanley off the low snap. And Fant can't hang on to that. They'll take the incompletion with 17 seconds left. Yeah, that's big getting that first down because if he doesn't get that first down, now you're under 10 seconds trying to run a play, and, and the game may have been over. But now, you know, we haven't mentioned Sharif Miller or Shaka Tony for Penn State defensively on this drive. Everybody knows they're throwing the ball. This offensive line has stepped up for Iowa, at least giving them a chance to push the ball down the field. 17 seconds left on the 44 of Penn State. They're getting louder. Five seconds to snap it. Here's Stanley across the middle. Broken up. Knocked down by John Reed, who's played a whale of a game for the Nittany Lions. 13 seconds remaining. You got to know the situation here. You got to get the ball to about the 35 yard line to at least give yourself a chance to push it to the end zone on the next play. You really only have time for two plays if the first play is a short one. They may decide to just throw it twice to the end zone. And Noah Fant is on the sideline watching, just like you and I are. Stanley throws, and it is juggled. Nick Easley could not come up with it. Seven seconds left. Well, Nick Easley comes up a little shaken up. Well, this is it. Comes down to this for Iowa. Came into this game controlling their own destiny in the Big Ten West when Northwestern beat Wisconsin. Potential playoff hope still on the line, and it all comes down to this play. Penn State has dropped five players back deep. They're going to rush four. Could be the final play of the game. Stanley's going to be dropped by Sharif Miller and then able to shovel it off to Tristan Wirfs. The big fella will be stopped at the 28. You were waiting for Sharif Miller to make a big play, able to pressure Stanley, and that will do it.